RNG. It stands for randomness in video games. And I'll show you how to add some random things to your game. This is Gerb's Adventure and you can download this from itch. There's a link in the description below. Feel free to use the sprites and build your game using this as a template. So, and I'll show you how I did fishing, which is a kind of a creative way to use randomness, right? All right, so here we go. I'm gonna show you how it works before I break it down. <clears throat> and at the end of this dock, there's a trigger that says start fishing or leave. If I choose leave, it automatically makes me walk away from that trigger because if the character stays in a trigger, every time you move in a trigger, it will re-trigger unless you create a variable um, that'll get um, set when the trigger's entered. So this time I'm going to start fishing. And when I start fishing, the screen shakes and it said, got away, try again. And so this time I got an exclamation point and I caught a fish. You have one total fish. So the first thing we do is create a multiple choice event. I'm just, gonna, I'm, I'm just calling the variable go fishing and it's not gonna be displayed in a string, so I don't need to use the ones with the dollar signs. Those are for displaying in strings. So go fishing is gonna store true or false. If the person makes the first choice, it's gonna store true. If the person makes the second choice, it stores false. So we're gonna call this start fishing and leave. Now that we had have the person um, make the choice, um, all these events, they go in order. So now go fishing has been set to true or false. Here, we added an event. By the way, you can search up top, so you can just do if, and here you can check. You, you can do all your if logic. That's a quick way to, um, to, to get to what you need. Anyway, so we check if variable is true. What variable? Go fishing, of course. Um, I put an event here to wait two seconds, just so it feels like you're fishing, like you're actually doing something. And um, here's how I did randomness. Math functions. So. Let me close these and just show you what a math function is. Um, I created a new variable called did I catch a fish? And it's I want to set this either to true or false, but remember zero is false and one is true, so we can use zero and one. If I go to add an event here just to show you and I search math, it creates an event where you choose a variable and then you can set it to true, false, variable, value, or random. And random is basically all I used to do the fishing. By default, it sets it between zero and 255. 255 is the highest number that a variable can store. So don't make a character's health or attack higher than 255. There are ways to get numbers higher than that, but just make a simple game where you don't go over 255. So, um, you can set it between a random number between 0 and 255, but if I make this a random number between 0 and 1, it's almost like making it randomly choose between false and true. All right, I'm going to remove this. I just wanted to explain it for you guys. So I set it to either um, 0 or 1. Now I can set check if it's true. And remember, true is just checking whether it's equal to 1. So if um, did catch fish, is set to one, the player's going to do an emote, which is the shock emote, and I'm going to shake the screen. And then I'm gonna increment total fish by one. Total fish is keeping track of how many fish he caught. And here it says you have dollar sign $17 sign, which is going to show the value that's stored in fish total. Now for the else, the screen shakes, but he says a different dialogue. It got away, try again. and I play the angry emote. I don't need to um, increment or decrement um, the fish total because you didn't catch a fish, so it doesn't affect that variable. That's why I skipped over that variable. Now, if the person selected to leave, if you look at, if you open and close these, it'll help you understand what variable you're checking. So this if statement is checking go fishing. However, inside of it, we have another if statement that's checking, did you catch a fish? This can get kind of confusing, but look at, look at this uh, blue. It looks like it's in a box, and then this pink looks like it's in another box, but the pink is inside of the blue box. Um, 
try to think of thing uh, of these math functions and variables as being inside of sentences. These are almost like sentences and it's either part of the sentence or not. I don't know if that helps. But anyway, if they chose to leave, then I'm going to move the player to this X and Y location. If I put my mouse over here, you can see there's a red box on the screen. I'm just going to move it a little bit. So you can control um, the movement of any enemy for a cutscene or almost anything by using move two. This is how you can shoot a projectile um, and I'll probably cover that in another video, but for now we're just making him walk to the end of the dock. Okay, next I'm gonna show you how you can use RNG for combat. If you come over here to the left side in Gerb's Adventure, there's some squirrels and they're just walking around, but if you walk up to it, it asks if you want to attack or run. Um, if you select run, I just made it say, um, I'll get you next time, and the squirrel gets angry. But <laughs> if I choose attack, right now Gerbs just deals 10 damage to the squirrel. And as you can imagine, and squirrel died, rip. As you can imagine, you can make the damage a variable that can increase when the character levels up. But what I'm gonna cover is being able to crit. We're gonna use RNG to crit, and we can even use RNG to make the squirrel choose between a couple of different attacks. There's a multiple choice um, text display. Where, and it just sets um, fight to true or false. And now this fight, you can reuse this for every single fight. You don't need to make a, a, a fight squirrel, a fight uh, bird, a fight stump, whatever, right? You just need one and you can reuse it because um, at the end you can set it to false. So here I did set value and I set it to um, zero. You can also do, um, variable set to false, that's actually what I probably should have done. I just know that zero is false. So here we set fight to false. So I'm basically just checking the fight variable, but no matter what you do, at the end I set it to false. And by resetting it to false every time, it becomes reusable. And that's how you can create reusable variables. If um, fight is true, um, I make the player um, angry, the player gets angry, and um, here I just did a text display that where that Gerbs deals 10 damage, the scroll gets hidden. Um, we hid the scroll just to make it look like it died. But let's add a crit to this. So what we'll want to do is add an event and just click the add event button. Make sure you're inside of the bo of the correct box. You don't want to click add event in, a, in an incorrect box. So here we're going to go back to math. I just create a new variable and I'll call it, and I'm gonna call it crit. And what crit is going to be set to is a random value between zero and 10. So it's randomly gonna choose between zero and 10. Let's make this actually smaller. It's gonna be set to a random variable between zero and three. And I actually want to do this at the very beginning. So what I'll do is I'll move it to right after the character gets angry. So crit is going to be set to a number between 0 and 3. I'm going to delete this event. And I'm going to delete this event. I just want to focus on right now so I don't want to confuse you guys so now we have crit and it's set to 0 and 3 but what do we what do we what can we do now with that value right almost always what you want to do is is search for if right if a variable compare with value is what you want to check now so we're gonna compare crit and we're gonna check if it's equal to 0 and then let's add um, another one if crit is equal to one, we're gonna do this. And let's add another one. If crit is equal to three. So if I close these, oops. So if I close these, you can see that we have three 
if comparisons, if, if, if. And the reason I did three is because the value can be zero, one, two, and three. Oops, we should actually set this to one. So that way there's only three options, one, two, or three. So the first one's gonna check if it's one, the second one's gonna check if it's two, the third one is gonna check if it's three. And any one of these can happen. So we can make GURBS do a random attack, or you can use this to have the enemy do a random attack, or you can use this to have an enemy say a random thing, or you can use it for critting. Um, I'm gonna remove these. I think you you guys will know would know what to, where to take it from here if you wanted to do different kinds of attacks. But just for critting, I only need one. And I'm gonna check if it's three. So if it's three, that means I crit. I'm just gonna do a, a text display. I search the word text and it's gonna say you crit. And then I'm going to do a te I'm gonna do a text display for um, any other this will be any other number and this one is gonna say basic attack. No no crit. Whatever, it'll just, just say no crit. I'm gonna move this into the else. I, w I wasn't in it. Double check, always make sure you're in the correct box. I'm gonna attack here and I crit. That was pretty lucky, let me attack again. No crit, I'm just gonna attack one more time for fun and it says you crit. Um, I wasn't actually dealing damage to the squirrel, I wasn't subtracting health. So I'll just give this um, squirrel some like 30 health. Search math again. And I'm going to subtract value and that value is going to be 10. And you see how I'm using 10 here and 10 here? You could make this a variable like the player's strength. And in that case, you would just go here and pick a variable which would be the player's strength. And then I, you can click here and do copy event paste event after, and I just copy pasted that logic, but here instead of subtracting 10, I'm gonna subtract five. All right, I minimized everything here because I need to show you a very important concept next. What happens is all these events happen from top to bottom, which means they all happen one time and then it's over. But for a fight, you need to attack multiple times, not just once. So for that, you have to search loop loop forever and I'm gonna put the loop right after I set the health because I don't wanna keep resetting the health to 30 every time you attack. So everything in this loop is going to keep looping forever. So just drag everything inside of that loop. Now this will loop forever. At the top here it says exit using stop script or switch scene. We don't need to switch a scene, we're just fighting a squirrel. So what we're going to do is um, add an event for if you want to leave. So remember, we check whether you want to um, um, attack or run. So the first one is um, whether oh, if you want to attack, the else is if you want to run. Squirrel says, I'll get you next time, and it gets angry. But what'll happen is it'll just go back to asking you whether you want to attack or run. So here we have to uh, just search, search stop, and that's it. You, you just put a, um, a stop script on here. So if you ran, it'll stop the loop. Now there's another time that we want to stop the loop and that is when you kill the squirrel. So let's go back into where you deal damage. And what we'll need to do after, it doesn't matter if you crit or if you do a basic attack, but over here what we'll need to do is we'll need to check if the squirrel is dead, right? So, so if the enemy health is equal to, is less than or equal to zero, we want to stop. That means the squirrel's dead. All right, so if the squirrel has less than or equal to zero health, what we want to do is hide it. Let's not forget to hide the squirrel because it's dead. But I'm gonna hide it before I stop the script. All right, so if I run, the squirrel says I'll get you next time and gets angry, but I'm able to walk away. It exited the loop. And now if I attack, 
it's going to tell me whether I crit or not. Remember, it's like a 33% chance to crit. So I deal five damage, I didn't crit, I'm gonna attack again and no crit this time again. I should have shown the health that the squirrel has so you, you know your progress, but um, remember I set it to 30. So once it gets um, uh, less than or equal to zero health, the squirrel will disappear. I killed it, it's gone, <laughs> it's dead. And there you go, that's as basic as combat can get. Just to juice it a little bit more, what you can do is what you can do is um, when showing the amount of damage that you deal after that I'm gonna display a text actually let me just move this the reason I moved it is because the math needs to get done first before you display it and now I'm going to show um, I'm going to say enemy has dollar sign 18 dollar sign HP and let's not forget to also put that into into this one all right so I hope you guys thought that was pretty cool you can add some RNG and some basic combat in your game. Even if you don't use this for combat, you can see how this could be used to have a character say three different dialogues depending on what item you bring to them or depending on what quest you're on or depending on all sorts of stats. If you guys want, I could show you how to do a Pokemon style uh, combat, but it will get more a lot more complicated. But a lot of these fundamentals will be used, so I'm glad I went over them in this video, even if you don't like this style of combat. In the comment section below, let me know what else you'd love to see me cover. And if you want to download this project, there's a link in the description. Feel free to use the sprites, feel free to use the code, and it's a good reference. Peace, and see you next time.